human trafficking is not just an absolute human tragedy, but you could call it modern day slavery. Whatever you like to call it, it is bad and it has never really, you know, sometimes they say whatever has an advantage, has a disadvantage. Maybe in this part, we would be looking at the advantage from the fact that people learn their lessons and decide not to go back into it. The media has been talking about trafficking and Maybe they haven't delved into the mental aspect of it. So on the media review segment, our analysis will be based on the mental effects of human trafficking on its victims and how well the media has publicized that aspect. My, my guest is Gloria Ogumbadejo. She is a mental health practitioner. And not just that, she is a journalist as well. <coughs> she is a columnist with The Punch and she writes so many articles regarding mental health matters. You're welcome. Hello, thank you very much for having me, Eunice. Well, I know this would be a jolly good ride because <laughs> in our little chit chat before we came up, you've just been so passionate talking yeah. about this. But let's take it from this, from a general point of view before we delve into, yeah. you know, the media. What are the psychological consequences of human trafficking on its victims? What are those consequences? Oh, this is a, a big topic and one that gives me um, a lot of sadness as well as um, makes me f really furious. I think um, before I even talk about the, the impact, the psychological impact, I think maybe it might be useful for people to know some of what actually happens when people are trafficked. Um, this is an area I worked with, um, with women who had come from war-torn countries many years ago. So trafficking in itself is not new, but there's something about what's going on now the phenomenon that it's um, close to somewhat of an epidemic. The demand for it has gone through the roof. And I think, you know, just very quickly, when you think of someone who is trafficked, uh, let me just start by even a child, because they seem to be the, the demand for children is great. So let's say a child between 8 to 13. Where from the place where they're trafficked, where they're abducted or sold, or however the process is, the, the child um, generally tends to be raped there. By, by the traffickers. Throughout the journey and transit, they're usually raped and abused and tortured. When they get to their um, point of uh, destination, it continues. The, the, the people who receive them tend to rape them, to test them out, because they, they, for as far as children are concerned, they're sent on to become, um, sent to pedophiles. So now this Use test you're talking about, mm -hmm. sorry, to yes. is in courts, like yeah. tests. They rape them. Let's not put quotes. They rape no, them. I mean test them mm. to see what they would be like to potential customers. Absolutely. So it's, oh you know, it's rape. You know, but that's what they use. They say they would need to test the samples. That's the language that's oh my used. Goodness. But so that, that's just, you can see already that the, um, the, the, they're already set up for um, serious, serious psychological problems because the child has no idea what's going on. They're being introduced to adult um, activities and they don't have the capacity to, to handle it. So already you've destroyed this child's life in ways because the younger you are mm. to go through this, the much more um, impactful um, the effects on it on, on you, you know, because already the child's life is distorted. Her view, his or her view on um, life is warped. You know, um, they don't trust ch um, adults. Um, they're introduced to things that now they become they're desensitized to a lot of adult things. So they actually seek these type of behaviors. A lot of the young people grow up to become prostitutes themselves. They, be, they have no boundaries because all their boundaries have been destroyed. Um, some of them self start self-harming. You know, we can go into that later. So that, that's just to give you a little window into what we're talking about here, you know. Um, so that's, that's, uh, that, that gives you, you know, so, uh, some kind of um, idea there. Yes, but away from the news about people being trafficked, like, you know, human trafficking, you see it everywhere. People just go, oh, some people were brought back mm -hmm. from Libya here, mm -hmm. there, mm -hmm. uh, and they were trafficked. Um, you just spoke about child trafficking, mm -hmm. and then there are some who are even adolescents or even in their 20s, mm -hmm. and they're taken um, for prostitution, mm -hmm. while the children are also taken for different mm -hmm. sorts, yeah. forms of trafficking. You would uh, agree that it is not so visible in the media, mm -hmm. the effects of these things on the children. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes the children are made to see things mm -hmm. beyond their mm -hmm. age. Mm -hmm. 
And when they return, people just say, so, so, so children mm -hmm. were brought back, mm -hmm. so, so, so adults were brought back. Yeah. How can the media make people, or rather, how visible, how, how can the media, what role can the media play okay. in making people know the traumas, yeah. the, the psychological effects of this okay. on Thank you for, for that. That's, again, another big um, area with lots of um, responses to it. I think, again, maybe what I need to do is also describe what um, is known as post-traumatic stress disorder, which is what many of these um, individuals will experience. It's the same kind of um, uh, difficulty that people who have come from war-torn countries, a lot of the people who have gone through bomb um, experiences, you know, they're all um, refugees, you know, there's a, there's a lot of situations where people suffer from PTSD. And what that is simply, I mean, it's an umbrella that covers a lot of psychological problems. And uh, one of the main ones is intrusive thoughts, where people have thoughts, it's, it's flashbacks, you know, um, of things that have happened to them. They have no control about those images coming into their heads. And when you have those kind of um, responses, it's like people who have been, you know, um, in war and they start having the shakes and they start seeing all the dead bodies and things like that. You know, similarly, um, intrusive thoughts of people having um, flashbacks of things that have happened to them. And when those things are going on, depending on what you're doing, you may be holding your baby, you may be driving, you may be, you know, you lose control of yourself. And a lot of this is evident, you know, um, when you go out on the streets and people, the level of anger people display, a lot of it is displaced. It mm. comes from the trauma that they haven't been able to work through. They haven't had um, resources um, to help them deal with it. People have um, uh, sl uh, sleeping um, disorders. They sleep too much or they don't sleep enough. They have eating disorders. They eat too much or they don't eat enough. You know, a lot of, um, especially women, self-harm. They cut themselves to deal with the feelings that they don't know how to deal with. Some people resort to that. Uh, and then, you know, what we see every day in the papers, people killing themselves, people hurting themselves, you know, each other. It's all possibly could be symptoms of people suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder. Okay, speaking of post-traumatic post stress mm -hmm. disorder, which would, you, you, you sort of preempted me because that was like the next question. Um, I've always had, you know, I'd always had cause to believe that PTDS was just basically about people who had witnessed war, crisis, and all that. But as time progressed, I realized that trauma of any sort mm -hmm passed through by anybody, mm -hmm. you know, the after effects could be regarded as post-traumatic mm -hmm. stress disorder. And not everybody, like you, you, we are talking about trafficking, not everybody can afford to go for rehabilitation mm -hmm. to reorient, give them a reorientation mm -hmm. of what life is mm -hmm. away from what they had experienced. So what role can the media play? What programs, what can they mm -hmm. do to be able to start bringing up such platforms for, you know, people to be educated about what they could do if they're facing trauma. Well, you've partly already said, you know, the, the solution and what um, you're doing here at Insight, you know, um, kudos to you because it's about raising awareness. I can't say that enough. Yes, um, there's another step after that, that there we need to have resources. Government has to subsidize resources that people can go and get treatment. But first of all, people have to be able to identify what's going on for them. And when you have, when you're armed with knowledge, for some people it's, it's just, it, it gives you a certain amount of relief to know that, oh, I'm not mad. Because here, when people behave in certain ways, immediately, you know, relatives go to, oh, you know, they've been attacked, it's a spiritual attack, it's the principalities, all those kind of things. It's, it's not helpful because to the person who's going through trauma, because all that person then does is, is um, internalize you know what's going on that yes something is wrong with me whereas the, something might be wrong but it's it's something that is potentially treatable if it's uh, identified so i think talking more about it having more programs having uh, professionals who come and actually talk with knowledge about the condition not just say things you know fancy words or things that are not really helpful make the language accessible break it down, you know, identify certain things that people may be experiencing where people can think, oh, okay, that happened to me 
uh, you know, for the past six months. So actually, there's a name for what's going on. You know, um, maybe, you know, I can, I, I'm not just a lost cause. You know, I can actually um, talk to someone about it who won't um, denigrate me or tell me I'm stupid. You know, so the more, you know, I heard it on TV. You know, exactly, it's not taboo. The more, yes, you know, it's just, yes, let, let's yes. break the silence. Let's talk about it because it's happening. It's real. Yes, yes, yeah. exactly. Uh, we shouldn't try to play down on relevant issues and sensationalize yeah. those who, that do not matter. Mm -hmm. I've been speaking with Gloria Mubadejo. She is mental health practitioner. And I like something very interesting about her. Is It's not just practicing. She's actually passionate about it. She's selfless about it. She writes about it. She talks about it. And we have witnessed uh, so many issues that uh, the media is not talking about. And I, I believe this is a forum where we would uh, pass the message across to the media to do more on sensitization and educating people more on mental health. Thank you very much for being part of this segment. Thanks for coming. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it's time to go. As always, it's time to wrap up on another episode of Insight. We do hope you were ed educated on different segments. Thank you very much for being part of the program. Till next week, bye for now. On behalf of all of us, always be there on Insight Belief. Today, you, you learned something about the fact that Nigeria is an evolving project. Let's look at our diversity to be our strength. Join the Revive Nigeria group. On behalf of all of us, always be there. Bye-bye.